I visited Paris in April for spring break. The last time I was in Paris riding a bike was exactly a year ago. And I came back just this past week from Paris and London. And I was in Paris uh, in late August. And I was in Paris back in the spring having a family vacation with my kids. What fascinates people is not only the fact that they see bicycles all over the place, but that it is possible. Now, they come to see Paris for the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and the Rue de Rivoli, which is a very powerful statement. And I did bike lane tourism. I mostly just wanted to experience what it's like to bike unencumbered, unafraid, feeling safe, feeling protected, just for three days straight. And I had the best time. There were a lot of people, tons of people, just going about their ordinary course of their day using scooters and bikes and just in huge numbers. And what, what struck me was they all looked so comfortable, casual, and it wasn't a big deal. I've spent a lot of time in Paris over the years and so I've kind of seen the evolution of the streets, the sort of transition from the old way of doing bikeways and protected bike lanes in Paris to the way they're starting to do things now, what they're calling their fourth generation of protected bike lanes. You know, I had been prepared that Paris had undergone all these incredible changes in terms of the bike infrastructure. So I was going in a little bit jaded, oh, how good could it be? And it really is amazing. The entire eastern half of the city uh, has been really transformed. Uh, bike lanes are double width in some parts. There are bike lanes literally everywhere and not necessarily always protected bike lanes, but uh, there's a climate of which uh, drivers really do know that they are guests on the streets. The mayor of Paris, San Hidalgo, has decided to deploy an ambitious program for transforming infrastructures in Paris, for reducing the role of individual cars and to increase the bike lanes and to develop pedestrian areas. They've made it really kind of miserable to drive and relatively easy to do almost everything else, you know, bike, walk, take transit. Um, you know, you look around the streets in Paris and every intersection you come to, the first, I don't know, 50, 100 feet of every block, there's no car parking and it's all scooter parking, bike parking, Valib, moped parking. And so like the most prime parking spaces are the things that they want to incentivize and the cars for once have to fight for the scraps. And it really changes the dynamic of all those intersections. It also daylights all those intersections, so it's a lot easier to, to see and cross. Some of the turns in Paris are much, well, they're much better than the ones we have here where any car can surprise you, run you over. In Paris, there was turn signals. There was a lot of bollards and things separating cyclists from cars. And I noticed that the small little touches, such as the bike signals, are at eye level. They're not up where the buses have to look up. So it really feels tailored to the cycling experience. I think it was mostly in the center of town where these major boulevards and avenues and streets had had half the street given up to bicycles and scooters and people. And if you have the infrastructure and tons of people riding bikes, that gives everyone protection. And you see it time and again in cities in Europe. Riding down Rue de Rivoli and seeing that constant flow of people and how much space was given over to people cycling and how little space was left for the you know, taxis and motor vehicles. It was a complete inversion of what we normally see with bikeway design here in the United States. I took Rue de Rivoli, I took it a million times, just back and forth. And I remember seeing people of all stripes, all ages. I did see a good number of children, but really just so many people wearing normal clothes, normal shoes. The big streets have the sort of more traditional stuff that we see in New York, the like heavier touch, you know, there's a lane, it's all deeply marked, it's protected. But the little streets don't need it as much. Paris hasn't, you know, invented the better bike lane. They just have more of them and honestly just have fewer cars. I wanted to turn left and I saw um, a sign that said cars not allowed or whatever, but there would be nonetheless a, a little painted arrow for bikes. So even if it was a one-way street going this way, I could go that way. So I thought that was fantastic and it just made me feel welcomed. Then you can really get into the neighborhoods, these tiny, tiny old medieval streets, and you can cycle contraflow. You can kind of cycle anywhere you're allowed to, to do that. And it makes the city, it makes the street network for cycling much more permeable. 
Um, so you don't get super high volumes of cyclists on the little side streets, but you know you're allowed to do it, and motorists have become uh, have come to expect that cyclists will be um, coming in both directions. We are very, very happy to have this uh, kind of uh, new bike lanes uh, to pedestrian areas. The, the key element for measures is uh, to preserve the urban common good. This is the real difference in a mayor promoting a high uh, urban quality of life. I think she is very courageous and she stood up uh, against a lot of criticism and uh, she's right there saying this is, the, this is the only way to be able to enjoy walking in the city because there are less cars and I have choice of, of mobility. The pandemic has, has accelerated the mobility, the bicycle, the bi bicycle lanes. Here in New York, again, we're fighting for scraps. The bike network is so paltry that all of us have to share the same two avenues to go north and south, pretty much, if you're on the east side. Why can't I use 3rd Avenue? Why can't I use Park Avenue? So there should just be bike lanes on every single north-south route in New York City, but there isn't. So we're all crowded on the same bike paths. Look, there's no question that New York has a lot of protected bike lanes, but they're so popular they've become really too narrow. The good news is people are using them. The bad news is too many people are using them. And now the, the modal sh shift has become such that there's sometimes just as many bikes as there are cars on those roadways, but the bikes are crammed into about eight feet and the cars have the remaining 50, 60 feet. I mean, I think one of the big things is to, is to build for the volumes we want. You know, we spend a lot of time building for the volumes we have, uh, and we end up with decent, but you know, still not wide enough lanes in a lot of places. And what we need to be doing is really building for for what we want to see, what we want to encourage. You know, I think again with the, with the Paris example, like they have built for the city they want to see. They have prioritized and made it absolutely the easiest choice to take the metro, to bike, to walk. Well, we've seen places in the city, particularly in the last couple of years where the demand far outstrips the supply of the space at certain times of the day. And so I'm thinking, you know, First and Second Avenue in Manhattan, um, thinking about Kent Avenue in Brooklyn, um, thinking about, you know, downtown Brooklyn, uh, Skimmerhorn Street, J Street. These are areas that have had some changes or have changes coming, but I'm concerned that they're not really being built for the number of cyclists that are using them at peak and the number of cyclists we should be planning for in the coming 5, 10, 20 years. And one of the most important things that New Yorkers don't get to experience in our city, even on our protected bike lanes, is the idea of riding alongside next to someone, you know, going for a ride, a social ride, which drivers get to experience whenever they want. They put someone in their passenger seat and they drive and they talk and they listen to tunes or whatever. In Paris, you can do that on a bike and it actually makes a really pleasant experience. I will say cyclist commuters tend to get annoyed in New York City when there are like leisure bikers, people, you know, I gotta admit, sometimes people complain about some city bikers, they're just kind of lollygagging around, but you should be able to lollygag. You should be able to bike two abreast with your friend and chat. Why can't we have that type of cycling experience in New York City? All it takes to transform one car highway into a bicycle lane, what it costs is political courage. It's the courage it takes to change the city, to actually say we can have a different society, we can have a society where a child can move by itself, where you know anyone can, even if you're not rich, even if you can't pay for a car, even if you don't want to pollute, you can still move around very easily. Well, I know that Mayor Adams is someone who does like to visit other parts of the world. He's not uh, one of these politicians who's closed off to uh, seeing how other cities do so, that's a great thing, and I think he will get to Paris. He's talked about going to Amsterdam as mayor. That'll be great.